July 13 budget hearings. I'd like to welcome all of you to our beautiful facility today. You're all just sitting on pins and needles to see where this board is going to go, I'm sure, in terms of our budget. So with that, uh, we're going to start with opening comments by our executive officer, followed by public comments, and then on to public protection. Mr. Orr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the budget is getting to be something that we do every uh, Tuesday when we meet, uh, but we are opening the uh, budget hearings for fiscal year 12-13 today. Um, back in March, you had a preview of uh, what we expect and, and received direction from the board. Um, Mr. Courser is going to get right into it to do a budget presentation. Uh, at some point today, we're going to be asking you for uh, a motion that's attached at the end of my letter to the board, um, approving the recommended uh, budget effective July 1, so that we have uh, authority for appropriations and the estimated revenue reserves and designations, make the uh, requisite 440 modifications and positions uh, to tentatively set September 11, 2012, uh, for the adoption of the final budget and direct my office and myself to make the necessary personnel changes uh, that are necessary uh, from this budget and the open budget hearings. Uh, but with that, I would like to uh, get into the, uh, the meat of the matter with Mr. Corson. Okay. Good morning, my name is Ed Corser with the Executive Office. Um, last week you had a good uh, warm-up session for the budget, uh, talking about revenue situation and spending needs and so forth, and that continues on a day-to-day -day basis. This, this budget we're presenting today is our recommended budget to provide you with spending authority for July 1. And um, it is essentially an implementation of what occurred at the end of March when we had some budget hearings. We presented a written document that talked about cuts to departments. Uh, we had some department heads speak, but we had all the departments represented in the write-up. And uh, so we took from that meeting, by the way, the conclusion that we're all in agreement we want a structurally balanced budget this time around. So we have moved in that direction, and that's what you have today. It's uh, structurally balanced as of today. Uh, with no use of reserves. We have still have $140 million in reserves, so that's a good thing. It's dependent, it's, it's, it's uh, shelf life is going to be dependent on a number of variables that we have no control over, but spending. The spending is the one variable that we can control. So as we look forward to uh, where we are, uh, let's keep that in mind. The first uh, slide shows you the countywide revenue. The, we've got to mention at least the $4 billion budget that we have. You see that we control about 13% of that, 575 million. The rest of that money comes from other funds, fees for service. We provide patrol to incorporated cities. We get paid for that. We get a lot of state money for programs run by our departments because we are an agency uh, of the state. And uh, so the 12% is the part that we're gonna focus on. You'll see in the bottom right that I mentioned, we're down about 309 million overall countywide. That's mostly because of the demise of redevelopment. That's, that's occurring, that will be in place, and that's accounted for in this budget. The next page shows what we spend our net county cost on, the $575 million. You can see most of it goes to public safety, and there are other pieces there. Uh, that, that varies from time to time, but uh, essentially that's the, the way we look at it, and that's the money that you control, and that's where we spend most of our time, and that's where you get to make those discretionary decisions. That five seventy-five is down only about $10 million from last year's final budget, but of course we lost revenue during the year, and in last year's budget we included a whole lot of one-time money. So that's what we're dealing with now, is how to get a balanced budget with uh, no use of one-time money. <coughs> Let me go back one here to county employee comp composition. We talk, uh, you see in the bottom left, uh, this 17,000 employees, uh, that's as of last week, I asked HR how many full-time employees we have on board, that's the number. We are actually down over the last three years by over 800 jobs. 
But then you have to take a look at the fact that the hospital and DPSS have been ramping up. We have a poor economy, DPSS is going to ramp up. That money comes from other than NCC. So we, we have to take that into consideration when we look at 17,000 employees. Um, most of them, I would say most of them, are either in this category of public safety where we're trying to not cut, or they're in this low and no piece of NCC where they don't use NCC anyway, and if, if we cut, we're not cutting, we're not saving any money for net county costs. So you can see the 26% are the remaining departments where we can make cuts to people to save net county cost. The, um, the net then is 522 jobs down after you add back the hospital and the DPSS hiring. We've got accomplished that as we've talked about before. We did furloughs, we did early outs, we've had layoffs, and we've had normal attrition. So in fact, that's been expedited as people see what's, what's happening in the county budget. The next page is uh, the first of two more important pages that uh, talk about where we have been and where we're going. The big block at the top is the amount that we had in appropriations for last year in 12-13, $683.4 million. That included uh, more ongoing revenue than we have today, but it included all of that one-time money that I talked about. So down below where you talk about the 12-13 recommended budget, you see how we're getting to balance. We are expecting $576 million in net county cost. I'll mention now that uh, we have an issue with property taxes, which I'll talk about a little bit in a second. But $575 million in ongoing revenue. We are hoping to have fund balance of $40 million. Uh, the important thing about that fund balance is we've never used more than 20 to balance the budget, but we've had at least 40 for nine out of the last 10 years. So we got a little to the edge and we're using an extra 20 as ongoing. If we don't get that, and we won't know that number until the mid to end of July, if we don't get that full 40, we have to make additional cuts. So that's one of the first vulnerabilities to this budget. Um, next is restricted revenue. Essentially that 32, 33 million dollars is money that comes to us in terms of net county costs saved because we have additional money from other departments. DPSS we thought we were going to have to pour more net county cost into their budget than we're going to have to provide, so that frees up net county cost for us. So that's helping us balance the budget. We have budget cuts of $22 million, which were discussed at the end of March. And then, that's as far as we can get as far as cuts at this point in time. So we are providing you with this budget that it's, although it's balanced, here's the next vulnerability. We normally carry a contingency of $20 million. That's in addition to the 140 of reserves. That contingency is there in case we have a major incident where we need to use money temporarily to fix a problem. Well, that's not 20 this year, it's only seven. We put 13 million in to balance the budget. So although we are structurally balanced, that's a placeholder right now to get us to structural balance. We are going to fill that back to $20 million in September when we give you a final budget. That $13 million is the number we are working on right now. We've been meeting with departments. We are, I can tell you, we are well along to reaching that $13 million. I have no doubt that we'll reach that by September. It means that there are going to be some more cuts. You'll, you'll be dealing with more cuts, but uh, we, I think we have pretty much a consensus with the department's heads we spoke with to get to that at least the $13 million. And at the end, the one time, there's zero one-time money in here for any ongoing costs. So that's, that's where we are. Now, some of the problems, the variables, in addition to um, what I'm talking about, the contingency and the use of fund balance, the state budget. Let's see if they get a budget this next week and the controller doesn't cut their pay when they don't come through. I don't know what's going to happen, but that's always an outlier. But from what I am hearing, the cuts are going to be in public services, which we don't like to see, but it will not have as much impact on our county budget. So I'm tentatively thinking that we may not get hit too hard by the state on our ongoing budget. The revenue trends, we need to wait until September to get a better picture of how the revenue is going. I'll mention this right now. This budget does not include the, the, what we have talked about as a $10 million additional reduction that might be necessitated should property taxes go down by two to two and a half percent. That will happen probably uh, sometime in July, the assessor has to report to us 
that's when we will add to the number of 13 and that'll take it up to 23. Um, we heard from the assessor as early as this morning that it may not be that bad. It may not be nearly that bad. But we don't know and I don't want to count it, right? And I want to wait until he says in July where we are officially because he's still, he's still doing the details. But that's, uh, that's another issue. Uh, the public safety partners, I call them partners because they have taken cuts in this budget. You heard from most of them at the end of March, and they have said that they will try very hard to work within the budgets that we've set. Well, we have a structurally balanced budget because they are taking that position, and we count on them to get there, to get through this with the kind of cuts that we've talked about. We are hopeful. We are putting that in their hands, but we have also said, if during the year you have uh, an, an irreconcilable difference where you cannot get through without additional funding, you need to come back to us. So we, we have that hangout factor and you need to recognize it. So that's another variable that we have to count on our public safety managers to manage for us. Um, fund balance, I've mentioned before, by the way, on fund balance, um, the, the sheriff is probably here or will be, and uh, he can speak to what we expect to get back from him this year on fund balance. I think it'll be positive news. Uh, another thing on fund balance, though, that $40 million that we need is to maintain our operating budget ongoing. So we've got to have the 40. If there's more than 40, that's only one-time money. We need to recognize that's only one-time money. and. Be very careful about saying we can use that excess of 40 for something that's ongoing. If you do that, we're on that slippery slope back to deficit spending. Um, so the last thing is the variable we do control, which is the spending piece. So I would, my recommendation is, if at all possible, that we hold off on any further spending until we know where we really are, which will be in September. In the meantime, we are working with the department managers, and we're going to meet with them this Wednesday to talk about ways and means of balancing the budget going forward, where they have plenty of input, and we're asking for their creative thinking. Uh, but one way or another, we'll get to a balanced budget by September, and we want to maintain the structural balance, because that's what you wanted, this is where we brought you, so everything from here on out kind of depends on what you want to do. The next page is one of the reasons why we want a structurally balanced budget right now. We are looking forward to several years of a difficult situation where costs are going to increase substantially for us. If we balance this budget structurally now, then we can deal with these next years by asking the departments to look at how they're going to handle these added costs. They come as a result of three factors. One is the pension cost increases which is the smoothing effect is now over. We are paying for the fact that we have delayed in paying for that, uh, uh, the debacle with the stock market in uh, 19, uh, 2008. Uh, they have also, the CalPERS has reduced its uh, assumed earnings rate from seven and three quarters to seven and a half. That's laying on us. And the additional salaries and merit increases that are gonna come as a result of negotiated uh, sessions with the bargaining units those get added as far as the pension costs too. So that's a pension factor. Uh, you'll see we have plugged in a couple of numbers for new jail operations. That's the new jail facility we're planning on. That, that number is not fixed and the timing not, may not be exactly this, but you need to have it on a piece of paper now looking forward for four years so you know that this is coming. We're looking in 14, 15 of an additional $20 million ongoing and then another 40 in 15, 16. That may stretch out, it may not be as big as what we're painting right now. The sheriff may want to speak to that too, but we have to have a placeholder there because we've got to start saving the money so that we can pay those costs when they, when that, once that building is finished. The last part is the labor cost increases. We achieved, as we said, pension reform, but there's a price for that, and that is we are paying higher salaries going forward for the next three or four years. This chart is a net chart. In other words, we're saving money from EPMC for the first four years. But it is more than it is being more than outpaced by the cost of labor. So that has to be considered. And uh, you'll see in the chart those numbers look really big at the bottom. But you got to recognize net county cost. The bottom right is 52 million dollars. That's assuming 20 percent of the total 
countywide, including those departments that get zero NCC from us, that assumes that 20% uh, of that cost will be paid for by NCC. So $52, million, $52 million. Uh, The thing I would warn you about is we assume the other 80% will come from these other people, whoever they are. Cities, which now get patrol services, they're going to be concerned about increasing salaries for patrol officers. Will that affect us? The state, which gives us a whole lot of money, they may start putting lids on how much they're willing to allow us to charge because they've got a bunch of problem too. <coughs> And so do the feds. So that 80% that normally comes from other sources, we need to be careful about using that as a guarantee because it's not really a guarantee. But if it works out that way and we pay only the 20%, we need $52 million ongoing and added up over the next four years. Now, um, we heard from some, some economists, a couple of them. And I, if I recall correctly, they said uh, not in 12, 13, but in 13, 14, we should have an increase in property taxes, which is 80% of our revenue by one half of 1%. Well, that's not very much. And then they proceed, I think both groups proceeded to say things will be back to normal. Well, what, what is normal two years out from now? We don't, we don't know. So even though they talk about 2% and 4%, and 6% even increases in property taxes. I hate to use the word baloney, but you know, um, none of us have a good crystal ball for that. There may be these leading indicators, but until you, until you really see it happen, we don't want to count on it. So that's why we're, we're, we're needing to get a structurally balanced budget right now and work with these departments that are gonna incur these costs because we'll be asking them to absorb those costs. We'll be sending those numbers out to them this week so they'll see what the, what the numbers are. And they have a full year to get ready for 13-14. So if you've got a whole year to get ready, we've got to work out some sort of uh, a plan where we can get by with this. If the revenue increases to any significant extent, we could use it to help them. Or you could say, oh no, we got a jail coming up, we need to set that money aside. Those will be choices that you can make. But that's, that's why uh, we need to be careful not only for the 12-13 budget, but also look forward to what's going on in the 13-14 budget. Um, I think I've covered the generalities of it, painted the picture as best I can. I, you know, it's um, it's uh, it's tentative right now. We we put these five-year plans together every time we get a chance, but we always think, hey, three, four, and five years are like guesswork, and we try to take what we can that we know right now and deal with it. And I think we're we're doing that. The departments have cooperated with us in trying to make these cuts. Uh, the uh, public safety partners have been great in dealing with this preliminary budget. We're hoping that they can, see, can succeed during the year, the year to meet those targets, but we have to be willing to deal with them uh, in a positive way if problems arise. So that's where we are with the generalities. If you want to talk about any details, uh, we have people that can talk about that, and uh, I usually just the general overview, but we can give you whatever details you'd like. Um, some things were cut in that budget in uh, in March. If you recall what any, what all those are, or are worried about those, want to talk to them, you can certainly do that. There are department managers are here. We ask them to be here if you want to talk to them. And uh, we're going to lead into a public uh, comment, I think, next. But if just keep in mind that any we're going to take this as the message from you. Anything you add to the budget right now is message to us to cut the budget someplace else. That's just the way we're dealing with it, as long as you want to maintain a structurally balanced budget. Okay, thank you. Um, excellent presentation, very clear. Uh, I do have uh, comments by members of the board. First, Supervisor Benoit. And by the way, I think our public address system is working very well now. You don't even need to get very close to the microphone. So oh, hopefully. It, it is yeah, seemingly very good. Although, I'm not sure of the odds, but we'll, we'll, we'll pray. <laughs> um, excellent presentation and, and direction, I think you've set uh, overall. I, I just, um, as I hear you talk, I'm thankful that you've come back to Riverside County. And uh, it's a very, very difficult job, uh, but I think uh, no question we've got someone very, very competent doing it. Uh, the one question I had, you talked about 17.7 thousand Riverside County employees today. Uh, down 600 if you balance in the fact we've hired some more for 
in those couple areas you mentioned that are affected by the downturn and so forth. Uh, I seem to recall that we were estimating we had about 20,000 employees <laughs> at a date certain going back X number of years. Could you, I mean, we were down a lot more than 600 over a longer period of time. You know, and that may be true, Mr. Benoit, because what, what I looked at was what happened since 2009. Yeah. And we, you know, the, the, the problem started in 2008, and that, that may mean a bigger number overall. I, I'd like to get that number. If we, Barbara, could you maybe uh, help us with that? I think it's important enough that the public know just how deep the cuts we've already taken have been. Right. Our full time employees numbered 22,000 in 2007. 22,000. Right. And then, and then the next two years we had the retirement incentives and natural attrition. We started cutting at that point. So, if we're at roughly now, there's over 4,000 fewer jobs if you go back as far as 2007. 4,000 fewer positions. The, fewer the positions. first cut, a lot of the, the positions had been left open for right. some time. So, um, those weren't all people that walked out. Yeah, yeah you got to differentiate between an authorized position and one that's filled. I'm only looking at a body that's drawing a salary. Right. Okay, okay thank you. Supervisor. Just to follow up with that, and, and then, then during this period, there were uh, three or four new incorporations. So uh, we ought to have a, just a rough check of number of uh, employees per major segments of our of our functions over the unincorporated the remaining unincorporated population right it's just, as soon as you start losing the uh, population the service level can be reduced the staffing levels can be reduced is that what you're referring to exactly yes exactly. and that, that and we are doing that Code enforcement, for instance. And there was a commensurate revenue reduction. Now, some of those employees were, they may have lost their jobs here, but the new employees hired over the city side, but it's a mixed mixed picture. It's hard to hard to really get a good, uh, good fix on what the service levels and number of employees per population is now compared to what it was. Yes. Okay, any further comments? See no comments then. Uh, before we go into our public protection uh, presentations, I would like to call, we do have public comment period on the agenda, or a bit early, but I'm going to go ahead and call on Brett Holstrom. Brett. for today if you want to make comments tomorrow uh, if you were going to be um, here tomorrow you're... I'll just make a brief one right we now. just don't know how long it's going to go so yeah I'll be here tomorrow too but I just will make a preliminary statement right now I was extremely disappointed in Mr. Orr and I don't know who else were uh, present on Tuesday afternoon's meeting when you solidified the four year contracts with the um, Sheriff's Association and I guess the Justice Department, I don't know who was there because I wasn't there. Because I thought we'd made it very clear, although you did not make it clear during the Board of Supervisor meeting, that you were going to hold the line, as Mr. Buster had uh, suggested, and I had suggested, and other people had suggested, and not increase salaries because the cow was dead, as I said. And it's still dead, and it will remain dead. And if any of you tried to resuscitate her, I would be extremely upset, okay? And uh, I don't think she can take that. Now, uh, getting back to reality again, um, there are many of us in the public that really uh, take this seriously, as I hope you will, uh, progressively so. You're not quite there, just one of you, it seems like. But uh, we are looking very much at the San Diego and San Jose 
um, progression of events, and we may have to go that way. Because if we make it, I don't, I don't represent all of them by any means, but they do call me. And I also call them representatives. We do not tolerate any more races of anyone. And we will not discriminate whether they are high in the totem pole or low in the totem pole. No more races, no more increases in, in the pensions, and no more races uh, in uh, uh, retirements. Bottom line. Now I don't know how much the uh, Mr. Zellerback and, and Sheriff Sniff are going to cry in their beer now. I'm sure they will. They're top of the line. I think they are shaming their deputies by coming up here today. Of course, I don't know what they're going to say, but I can anticipate that they're going to shame their deputies by begging for more pay. We have about 10 seconds for yes. All right. <coughs> uh, the rest of it, I'll make my impressions and then give that tomorrow. Thank you. All right, so thank far, you. we're not pleased. Thank you. All right. The, any others in the audience wish to speak on public comment that have not re, that have not submitted a request? I right, see none. Then we're a bit early, but I see the sheriff is here, so we're going to go into public protection. Stan, did you wish to make some comments this morning? And Paul. set up. Yep. Saw you in the paper today in your shooting outfit. Was that? Uh, I was in the paper today. Is that the picture of you in your? I haven't seen that one. No. Is it good? Was that meant to be time to budget hearings? <laughs> no. <laughs> Catches up with us. Uh, there's to, an article in there that uh, I uh, gave you on a Associated Press article that, that popped out this last week. And why they're uh, getting the first slide up. I'll to touch bases with that. It's one of the additional complexities that we're dealing with, all of us in the criminal justice system. Yeah, it's the article. Copy of the Associated Press article. It's entitled New Law Reduces Oversight of Parolees. And this is uh, one of the unintended consequences of uh, AB 109, um, it's not so much impacting the county as far as the cause of it, uh, but this is oversight of regular parolee, parolees from state prison system, and uh, they are reducing uh, oversight. And as many of you know, we used to have strings of uh, parolee terms and conditions. Those have now been abruptly cut off. And the point of the article is there's a six-fold increase um, from the month of March this spring, unbeknownst by anybody, um, for April. And nearly 6,000 of all these that were released, uh, when you get the opportunity to read this, are coming back to Riverside County, Orange County, San Diego County, and Los Angeles County. And all the law enforcement officials in those other counties a little bit further west were stunned because there was no warning whatsoever that people now are being dropped back into their communities with no strings whatsoever. Again, another challenge for local law enforcement. District Attorney's Office increased issues, and you'll see a magical quote in there that I'll end with on this. Um, and this is one of the, and again, a lot of the safety nets that are along with those strings have to deal with counseling and housing and so on as far as reentry into our communities. Still handled by state parole. And on the last page, you'll see that one of the quotes from one of the parolees and uh, I quote from his, his comments there, I was scared, said Danny Romero, who is enrolled in a residential rehabilitation center near USC and has been to jail six times, the last time for, burglar, for commercial burglary. And he quotes, I didn't have any money. 
and I thought maybe I should just go rub a store like I've done before. And that kind of thumbnails, pretty good article the press picked up on, little known part, it kind of blindsided a lot of us. I suppose if we looked all through all the ink, we might have saw that one coming too, but uh, it's like a uh, rabbit out of a hat almost every day dealing with these issues. Um, it doesn't impact us specifically for the issues that I'm going to talk to you about the budget, but it's one of these overlying things falling out of the heavens right now that we're dealing with. Anyway, I'm Stan Sniff, uh, Riverside County Sheriff. Good morning uh, to you all. Um, I'm going to end up uh, briefly uh, updating you from what I first briefed you on our budget request and status for this fiscal year back on March 29th. Uh, there are really no surprises. Uh, there's a couple of good pieces of news. I do have some recommendations at the end uh, that I'm going to uh, make to you. I do need some board direction. Uh, as I indicated, I would need at this point uh, when I talked to you last a couple of months ago. Uh, we've appreciated the, uh, the cooperation and the hand-in-hand -hand, uh, work ethic that we've had on dealing with uh, wrestling with our not only your monumental budget issues, but ours as well, the criminal justice system, and specifically the sheriff's office. Uh, a lot of uh, great help we've had from uh, Ed Corser and, and Jay and, and his predecessor, uh, Larry Parrish, as far as working through some of the complexity. And again, not always in agreement, uh, but I really appreciate the, the, the professional cooperation that we've had. And as you know, uh, my budget uh, this year is, uh, like it has in previous years, is contracting in some arenas, and we'll talk about that, and uh, expanding in others, most notably jails, which will probably be a long-term expansion. And much of that, as you well know from me talking to you a number of times, is net county cost areas. It has little to do with uh, how much ends up being an incorporated area. The jail system supports everybody, incorporated cities and unincorporated areas as well. The other thing you're going to see in here is the senior leadership based on the board guidance that, that I got last summer. And if you remember, we had a, a tenuous uh, budget agreement, and uh, thankfully you op let me operate a little bit into the red this year with a promise that I would take down the force in the unincorporated area. And uh, from top to bottom, uh, with a great deal of uh, micromanagement from the executive level, um, we in fact did that. And that's no small feat with an agency as complex and as many moving parts as the Sheriff's Department is. If you go to the agenda page, uh, these are the things I'm going to touch upon. I'm not going to dwell on a lot of the same things that I talked to you about on crime stats and so on. I, I think you got that pretty, uh, pretty full up in, in March. But like by exception, as I indicated, I'd like to end up updating on a couple of things. The key areas I'm going to talk about at the end are patrol staffing levels and my recommendation of what we do. And I'm talking specifically about the unincorporated area. The jail expansion uh, philosophy and strategy uh, that I've been in, in discussions with uh, uh, county staff on in our own department uh, is already ramped up and moving in that direction as well. Still a lot of unknowns out there, but I'd like to frame part of it, at least from, uh, from the Office of Sheriff. The 911 cellular issue that I brought to and discussed a little bit at length uh, back in March, I, I still need direction on that one. I think the board understood that full well, that that was a major issue. Uh, right now with the Highway Patrol unfortunately having to pick up the front of a lot of our workload and it does blind us a little bit so I will talk to that a little bit. I'm um, also going to address the impact of uh, some of the MOUs that we project that we'll have on the contract city rates because uh, as you know most of that is our labor costs and as Ed indicated earlier, Ed Corser indicated earlier, uh, there are issues as far as uh, when those costs get passed on or where they end up going. And then of course I'm going to touch very briefly on the recruiting issues that I mentioned to you. Uh, a couple months ago. Next slide. This is a quick summary of uh, our budget status for this year. Um, as you know, we, we adopted with the promise of taking the force down by attrition. Uh, we adopted a budget that was uh, just short of $6 million in the red. Um, some, there were some doubting Thomases as far as uh, whether we could end up pulling that off. I was very comfortable with taking that uh, degree of risk and uh, in our Projections on that have been right spot on, and uh, our force levels are dropping. By the end of summer, they will hit uh, rock bottom of 0.75, and I'll come back to that issue. Um, fiscal discipline, I've touched upon, the department from top to bottom has energized that, and uh, unreimbursed overtime are key targets. Any area that we can delay, even on delaying promotions, I still have, have I explained to you a number of times, I still have a number of missions, and I, I am still legally responsible for commanding and controlling folks that end up using uh, 
deadly force and uh, can get upside down on constitutional rights. Uh, very tricky, high li liability arena, as, as all of you know, especially when you're dealing with things forced, including up to including deadly force issues on that. But in spite of all that, and uh, we we're also blessed by not having a lot of emergencies. As you know, I have a responsibility to deal with that and take care of the public wherever that occurs, uh, working with our criminal justice partners, uh, but we've We've had a good year. That red ink projection was reduced uh, steadily throughout the year as we reported, and uh, that fiscal discipline without any emergencies has, has allowed me to end up having a, uh, a good report. Next slide. And that is uh, the good news I have for you today is our projection now uh, near the end of the year, this is as of the end of uh, May, is we will be about six million dollars in the black so we've actually swung nearly 12 million dollars out of just the net county cost portion uh, so we're, we're pleased to return that back to to your control uh, i do have some recommendations for part of that part of that that money uh, is actually in, in the form of payouts that employees based on some of the employee contracts that they recently were granted uh, move their retirement date so the finish line, instead of prior, prior to uh, 1 July, in some cases is now after 1 July. Uh, so some of that money will be committed uh, no matter what, just to uh, deal with those uh, projected losses of our employees. Uh, you can see the personnel gains and losses there. I'm not going to read that to you, because, but you can basically see in a micro form uh, the downsizing of the department. And as I said, much of that downsizing, even though we move people about, and we're plussing up, we're increasing staff in the corrections arena pursuant to AB 109's uh, plans and that additional money we got. The reality is we've dropped the force level. Uh, much of that has been in the unincorporated area, as I promised. Resignations have continued, and I, have, I talked a little bit about that. Uh, currently, and this isn't terminations, this is not uh, retirements, but just um, resignations. We've lost uh, 48 as of uh, this past week. Deputy sheriffs, largely, that were hired in the last couple of years. Some of them were in the uh, spotlight as far as potentially losing their jobs due to layoffs and uh, put out applications in a variety of areas, and that's part of one of the consequences we had when we ended up going through that tough budget battle this last year, some of them clearly. The majority of those deputies were not from out of county. They lived here in county and actually moved to other agencies here locally where the benefits were a little bit more sure-footed and they wouldn't be potentially laid off. Next slide. This is a recap of the same slide you, you saw before. Uh, probably the only uh, thing that I'll underscore is the executive office has already found money. If you remember, I had a problem with potentially the cops deputies that we got on a three-year grant a number of years ago when we were first going through some of the budget cuts. We got one of the largest grants from the federal government for cops, community-oriented policing, uh, that was awarded. We got the same size as the Los Angeles Police Department and one of the uh, big cities up north. Uh, but 50 was the biggest number they allocated that year. But the proviso with the federal government was that we would agree to carry those deputy sheriffs over after the funding left. Uh, and they are actually quite critical now because they are embedded in what is a very short-staffed, unincorporated area. The executive office found uh, money and moved that one-time money in for this next fiscal year. And so we are clean on that part. Next slide.